Good evening and welcome to State of Business on Art Television. I am Nadon Sirivardhana. Let's have a look at the headlines. Tourism Ministry reports an upward trajectory, potentially surpassing the numbers of 2018. Incumbent President announces his official candidacy for the upcoming presidential election. News in detail. President Ranil Vikramasinghe officially announced his candidacy for the upcoming presidential elections. President Vikramasinghe said that continuing on this current trajectory is in the best interest of the youth, underprivileged communities and the overall economy of the country. The president said this speaking at a political rally held in Goa over the weekend. Adamam me nagare tavilla tiyenne vishesha weda katyuttak karanne. E metenta avilla මම ජනාධිපතිවරණයට තරඟ කරනවා කියලා දැනුම් දෙන්නත් ඒ වගේම දැනට මගේ ඇප බැඳලා තියෙනවා කියලාත් මම කියන්නේ දැන් කොහොමත් රුපියල ශක්තිමත් වෙනවා අපි දන්නවා පොලිය අඩු වෙනවා අන්න මේක අපි මේ ඉදිරියට යමු මේ ගමන ඒ ගමන ඉදිරියට යන්නේ නැත්නම් අපිට විසඳුමක් නැහැ ඉතින් විශේෂයෙන්ම මේ රටේ සාමාන්‍ය ජනතාවට මේ බර අඩු කරන්න අපි මේ මාර්ගය යන්න ඕනේ වෙන කවුරුහරි කිව්වොත් අපි වෙන මාර්ගය එක යනවා කියලා අහන්න කොහෙන්ද ඔය සල්ලි තියෙන්නේ කියලා මේ බොරු කියන කාලය අවසන් වෙන්න ඕනේ ඒ විතරක් නෙමෙයි දැන් ආධාර වෙනවා අපිට රට දියුණු කරන්න පුළුවන් ඒ වගේම අද ඉන්න ජනතාව ගැන හිතනවා වගේ මම හිතන්නේ තරුණ අය ගැන ඒ අයට හොඳ අනාගතයක් තියෙන්න ඕනේ අපි දැක්කා ලක්ෂ ගණන් මේ රටෙන් පිට වෙලා ගියා ඒක ආපෝ ඉඩ දෙන්න බැහැ අපි හොඳ රටක් හදන්න ඕනේ අපි මෙතන දකිනවා සිංගප්පූරුවේ ඩුබායි වල මිනිස්සු ඉන්න හැටි ඇයි අපිට බැරි ඒක මෙතන හදන්න ඒ අපිට බැරි අලුත් රටක් හදන්න ඒ අපිට බැරි අලුත් ආර්ථිකයක් හදන්න අපි මේ බොඩු කර කර හිටපු නිසානේ මෙතන හිර වෙලා තියෙන්නේ අපි එතෙන්ට යන්න ඕනේ මේ තරුණ අය බලන්නේ මොකද්ද අපේ අනාගත මං කියවා 2048 කියලා විපක්ෂයේ හිනහ වුණා එයාට තේරෙන්නේ නැහැ 2048 කියන්නේ මේ බොහෝ දිනක් තරුණ අය 50ට අඩුයි In Sri Lanka's tourism sector which is showing a strong upward trajectory top officials have reported over 1.16 million visitors so far in 2024 noting a significant recovery for the industry Tourism ministry officials expressed optimism that if current trends continue Sri Lanka could surpass its benchmark year of 2018 speaking at a press briefing held at the presidential media center recently Tourism Ministry Secretary Somaratna Vidhanapathirana highlighted the setbacks faced by the industry since 2019 but noted concerted efforts by the government private sector and affiliated institutions have led to a promising recovery Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority Deputy Director General PU Ratnayaka added that tourism revenue from January to June 2024 amounted to approximately 1.55 billion dollars He highlighted the development of large scale resorts in Kuchaveli, Kalpitiya and Deduva which are ready for promoters with additional projects in Yala open to investors. Ratnayaka also noted the completion of several development projects with a total of 16 investment projects approved totaling 224 rooms and an investment of approximately 25.39 million dollars. Speaking further at the press briefing, Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau Chairman Chalaka Gajabahu highlighted several successful marketing initiatives over the past 2 years. The Promotion Bureau Chairman emphasized the Seen is Believing project which hosted 189 international travel bloggers and communicators over the past 2 years with the goal of accessing niche market segments. Tourism Promotion Bureau Chairman Gajabahu says that the bureau also utilizes 15 major travel fairs and 29 road shows to promote tourism. Sri Lanka Institute of Tourism and Hotel Management Chairman Shirantha Pires reported that the institute trained thousands of students between 2021 and 2023 with plans to train over 10,000 trainees in 2024. Further the Department of National Zoological Gardens Deputy Director HG Jayasekar reported that local and foreign tourist visits to botanical gardens have seen substantial increases. He revealed that by June 2024 the gardens generated 735.56 million rupees marking significant growth compared to previous years. Stay tuned we will return after this commercial break.
Welcome back. Sri Lanka is set to participate in the seventh round of bilateral political consultations with Pakistan, scheduled to be held in Islamabad tomorrow. The consultations will be co-chaired by Foreign Secretary Aruni Vijaywardhana and Pakistan's Foreign Secretary Mohammad Cyrus Sajjad Qasi. The discussions will cover a wide range of topics including economic and trade cooperation, defence and security, education, culture, media and sports, consular matters, agriculture and technology. On the sidelines of the consultations, Foreign Secretary Vijaywardhana is scheduled to meet with the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of Pakistan, Mohammad Ishaq Dar. The Sri Lankan delegation will also include the High Commissioner of Sri Lanka to Pakistan, Admiral Ravindra C. Vijay Gunaratna, and the senior officials from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the High Commissioner of Sri Lanka in Islamabad. The last round of bilateral political consultations between Sri Lanka and Pakistan was held virtually in December 2020. Now, the Sri Lanka Export Development Board successfully concluded its 24th Exporters Forum on the 25th of this month, a crucial platform which aimed at addressing and resolving the challenges faced by exporters. The forum was presided over by the State Minister of Investment Promotion, Dilum Amunugama. During the event, Minister Amunugama highlighted the establishment of a Trade Facilitation Task Force at the EDB. This task force, with designated focal points from relevant public sector agencies, aims to identify, analyse and address bottlenecks in the export value chain. The Trade Facilitation and Trade Information Division of the EDB organises the Exporter Forum regularly. Exporters are encouraged to present their issues to the Export Development Board through various methods, including mail, email and special online platform OATAO. The launch of the Commercial High Court website, which was a joint venture by the United Nations Development Programme and UNICEF in Sri Lanka and facilitated by the Ministry of Justice, was held in Colombo last week. The event saw the presence of Chief Justice Jayant Jayasuriya, Head of Corporation Delegation of the European Union to Sri Lanka and Maldives, Dr. Johan Hesse, UNDP Resident Representative Asusa Kubota, and Deputy Resident Representative, UNICEF in Sri Lanka, Begona Arellano. The newly launched website offers a comprehensive digital platform designed to enhance the transparency and accessibility of operations in the Commercial High Court of Colombo. It features up-to-date access to latest judgments, orders, daily court lists, and important public notices. Additionally, the site hosts amendments to acts and regulations relevant to the Commercial High Court processors. At the event, Dr. Johan Hesse and Nasusa Kubota handed over digital equipment to the Secretary of Ministry of Justice, supporting the operationalization of an additional commercial high court room in Colombo and the model small claims court in Kandy. Stay tuned for the stock update. Trading at Colombo Stock Exchange ended on negative notes today. The All Share Price Index dropped 14.37 points to close at 11,619.01, and the S&P SL20 dropped 16.47 points to close at 3,369.16. The turnover was 0.3 billion rupees, and over 12 million shares were traded. Up next are forex rates. That's all our news for today. For this and more, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Facebook. Take care and good night.